Okay, this will be the second, probably the final one in terms of this basic review of how the calculator can be used, the TI calculator can be used for matrix work. Um, I've also shown, because you cannot avoid the fact that the computation um, is done by um, things that are a little bit more substantial and more um, ubiquitous than the calculator, ubiquitous meaning everywhere. So I'm going to point out that anyone who has a computer has access to this emulator. You go out to the developer's kit at Texas Instrument and you get a, a, a developer's kit um, and you can download it and install it on an, on an Apple or a Mac or a PC. I think better on a PC though also on an Apple. Um, Wolfram is available to anyone with any phone basically um, any smartphone for sure so what I'm gonna do is just go through very quickly here a quick operation and showing you how it looks in both the calculator and in Wolfram so we're gonna review now how you put another way to put information in um, to the calculator so I'm gonna more or less come up with a system equations here that's four by four so it might be something like this 3x plus 15y plus 37z plus 18t equals 47 and 9x minus 45y minus 36z minus I go plus 45t equals 93 and if anyone's telling me my sense is this t probably should be negative so I'm going to change those here later because we're going to talk about what negative time means so negative those are negatives all right and then I'm gonna say minus 18x plus 35y plus 100z minus 12t equals 5000 and finally 107x plus 59y minus 200z minus 57t equals 7,000. And I'll let you know that mathematically these don't always have solutions, but these are effectively one, two, three, four moving planes, P-L-A-N-E-S. This looks like the equation of a moving plane. It's got X, Y, and Z in a single um, uh, but with single powers, nothing on the bottom, and it has time involved, and so you'll see that as a moving plane. So these are four moving planes, and so when and where do they all come together would be the question that this would solve. I'm going to hit a pause here and check the coffee, but what we're going to do here is we will show you that it's really difficult to do the inverse of a 4 by 4 matrix, but the calculator does it fine. Getting solutions, very often you have to realize when you get something wrong out of the calculator, um, it's going to it'll probably just explode on you but also I want to show you how Wolfram Alpha actually goes about dealing with uh, matrices so I'm gonna hang on and pause here and be right back alright I will go without coffee for a little while here and show you what this looks like when you write it up in matrix I'm gonna to go to review start inking again so you have your coefficients times your variables equals I guess whatever we call that on this side. So your variables are x, y, z, and time. Your numbers on the other side are 47, 93, I think they're called these the constants, 5,000 and 7,000. I apologize for the small. And then 3x, 15, 37, minus 18 it's a good idea to include those in a parentheses when you're doing it 9 minus 45 minus 36 minus 45 I apologize for those of you on an iPhone this is not gonna work get a real screen they're coming minus 18 35 100 minus 12 and then finally 107, 59, minus 200, and minus 57. 
Here's what this could look like if this was basic math. A times x equals b. What do you do? You multiply both sides by the same thing, which is the inverse of a, to get a solution that gave you x equals something. That's the math. The math is this. If you do a times x equals b, you multiply that a times x times the inverse of a, and you do the same to the other side, and so you get x equals b over a. That's the math. That's the basic math. It's not very different in the calculator when you start talking about. So let's see how quickly we can now put this in. What you need to have is you need to have a 4 by 4 matrix and then a 4 by 1 matrix. So I'm going to see if I've got any of those in the calculator so don't go over on top of anything. I don't. So I can go ahead right away and just go to matrix, second matrix, and go to edit. Uh, before I'm going to do that, it's easy to do the mode so you don't get kind of screwed up. You can hit mode here and change that mode so your numbers don't overwhelm you. I'm going to put that at right now because we've got basic numbers here. I'm going to enter one here and I'm going to, I've got it set to degree. So now I'm going to go second matrix. And I'm going to go back to the same ones I was using. F, I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to make a four by four. And you then put them in as they are. Three, push over to the right hit a return, I'm sorry, it jumps across, 15, it jumps across, 37, it jumps across, minus 18, it jumps back to the left, 9, enter, minus 45, bad writing in my case, remember you got to use the negative command, not the subtract, minus 36, minus 45, it jumps all the way across, minus 18, 35, 100, and minus 12. Finally, 107, 59, minus 200, and minus 57. Those are now stored in matrix A. I put them in matrix A, so I so so be it. Second quit. So matrix A, second matrix A has those values. Second matrix A inverse has those values, which you can't see because of the float. All right, now what you need is a matrix that's stacked up of 4 by 1. That's 47, 93, 5,000, and 7,000. You're going to multiply the inverse of matrix A by that B matrix, and you'll get the solution of what X, Y, Z, and T is because this stacks out, as you remember, to a unity matrix or an identity matrix. So how can I do that? I'll go second matrix. I'll just put this one in B. I'm going to now go to second matrix, edit. B is going to be, I want to go second matrix. You can see why sometimes it's easier just to kind of learn to put them stacked. Second matrix B is going to be a four by one, stacked up one over the top, one right on down the page. And they are 47. Go right down 93. Write down 5,000 and eventually to then 7,000. Now, I would tend would I would tend to take and store the um, myself. I'll hit second quicker. I will tend to store the inverse of a into c, but you could do it this way: second matrix a. Let me hit it clear here. You could do it this way, second matrix A inverse times second matrix B, and that will get you your solution. So at the time, and you see the negative time here, so I was off. The negative time, which would be going backwards in this moving things, this is reasonable, um, because time 
is based on some datum. You have to pick a datum so you can't have a negative time. You want it to, it's like stationing. You don't want to do that, but in this case, you could do some shifting. So that's how you go about using it um, to do solve systems of equations. What we're going to see more likely, you're going to be using a four by four matrix for something entirely different. So I'm going to show you that. You know, for the the majority of what your four by four matrices are going to be in, at least in a civil engineering program, is going to be for transformations. And so I want to finally show you in this one how you'd fill up now, for instance, C with a called an identity matrix. So if I do second matrix here, I'm going to go to math. I'm going to go identity, and I want it to be a four by four. You just put in four, and you're going to stow that into second matrix C and now second matrix C is that starting point for you to now go to second matrix go to edit go to C and make your transformation matrix which you remember the top one two three the, the top left nine are for rotations scales and the bottom or the ones on the right are for if you're moving something like 80 in the X you can hit an enter and then you got to jump around and then maybe you're going a nine minus 50 in the Y and then you go across there and maybe then you're gonna go up 500 in the Z and now if you multiply any stack matrix that you had for instance that matrix we had we multiply C times a Let's look at them here. Now I've got that set second matrix. I'm going to see the second quit. Second quit. I'm going to go, well, we got A. A is a 4 by 4, so I can now take C times A. It's doing something completely different, but mathematically it works. I'm going to take here second quit. Second matrix C, which is my transformation matrix, to second matrix A right and that will get me a matrix now realize that when we do things X Y Z our X Y's and Z's are going to be stacked the other way so I'll show you just for demonstration how these things work I might want to take the transpose of matrix A so I can do this second matrix A and I can do second matrix math transpose and I can stow it right away into second matrix A. Now, if that doesn't work, you have to go through a middle value, but right now you did the transposition. And so these things start to make a little bit more sense. Now, you, you're learning the basic matrix operations in math, and that's what I've concentrated on here. I've kind of mixed some things around. But the reality is you are doing more multiplication of a 4 by 4 by a 4 by I don't know, 10,000. That's what you're doing when you're using Wolfpack or when you're doing coordinate transformations or basic animations. So I will package these with some basic fun animations I've seen. First ones that we're using um, stop, um, time stop um, animation. But I'll point out down here that all these values can be calculated with Wolfram, with Ruby, with any programming language um, and so right now I show you how you would put in a 3x3 three three or a 4x4 four four. I'm just gonna go ahead and make that a 4x4 four by, four. by stacking lists you get used to the fact that it's gonna be better to train yourself in a calculator to actually do things with the squiggles and put them together a matrix is nothing more than a list of lists and so I I'm going to run out of time here. I get 15 minutes of YouTube fame at a crack. That makes it 30 for this whole bit. You've got the theory within math. You've got um, people like, I'm going to go edit, paste, and I'm going to do it one more time here. And people like Sal Khan giving you lots of support. One, two, three, four. So right now I've got a, the inverse of a list of lists. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 4 by 4 if I hit equals there and not only will it give it to me in this format in a nicer way it'll stack it up for me and so I can see now it also tells me that it's singular so I think what you learn um, is that there are some matrices that are singular and we don't have time to cover that um, 
but it's got a pseudo inverse. Thanks for listening.